and uh, for this based on the first this week and lot of people have uh, responded and there is a guy gentleman prakash from los angeles and he responded and he wants to know more about the uber story again uh, same thing you know like how we talked about you know i think the moment we talk about startups everybody is talking about uber looks like this gentleman is also the same thing and he says that most of the valuation for startups is fair to be only on paper unlike those in the stock market so would you like to comment i think we just talked about it but uh, since he mentioned uh, you know prakash i think his name is prakash from los angeles yes so and he wants to know your comments sure so the value of any asset is dependent on the existence of buyers right so if yes. buyers exist for a particular asset it is considered liquid, liquid. asset yes exactly Otherwise, so uh, it's in the uh, stock market it's because buyers exist that this trading happening the minute buyers go down your sale price goes based down on supply and demand this, everywhere exactly the same is the logic for startups as well right so if you are invested in a startup with solid performance there are going to be buyers out there uh, there are going to be opportunities for you to exit and again your team should ready the buyers for you there are third parties and neutral entities out there that can value your company such that buyers will automatically start coming looking at you know the kind of valuations that your investment has so i would say it's definitely as liquid as any other market out there right i mean and also the there's a but i think his name is batia from uae and he wants to know more about the risk associated with investment in an indian market he says that there has been no major success story of exit in india well it depends on how you define success right now if you're going to define it as an ipo yes the indian ipo you know scene hasn't been as hot as it has been in the us but if you do talk about you know uh, secondary sale exits etc there's definitely been a tremendous amount of activity that's been happening in india for example one of id ventures is own investments right it was it grew by 3x uh, in one year and it provided an opportunity for partial exit for some of it, the investors and this is not even you know our uh, show horse it's not even the the most best performing uh, company that we're invested in so i would say there's definitely a lot of excitement and a lot of opportunities to exit you just have to look at it in the right lens got it and uh, well said that point and also like uh, there is a sam from washington dc he wants to know i want to start a company in india i already have an llp in usa how do i go ahead with incorporation so looks like he is already i think limited liable partner i believe llc I see. llp yeah llp in usa how do i go ahead with uh, incorporation well we will dive into incorporation he wants to start a company in india got it uh and he has an llp here yes. in the us so we will be deep diving into incorporations and the technicalities involved in it later but in short i i'd like to answer the gentleman's question so if your uh company is in the form of you know 100% fdi allowed uh domain uh hopefully 100% automatic you can go ahead and start a company in india as a 100% owned subsidiary of your llp here in the us uh, i would recommend um registering it as a private uh, limited company and not an llp or a partnership uh there tend to be uh, you know regulations there that that which is why i wouldn't recommend that so that's my short answer but uh please uh, stay tuned for the episode where we'll be deep diving into it and uh, not only the uh, every time the startups and uh, we also want uh, our existing uh, business people to contact us for uh, getting the more investment for their expansions and uh, not necessary that every time you know like you no know, they have an idea and uh, they want to start or something so is it typically possible from your you know private equity firm side to really encourage the uh, you know like you know those type of companies having existing business who are your ideal people to contact us basically so we are sector agnostic that means we're open to companies from all sectors right now we go through a very rigorous three layered uh, analysis and vetting process but that said if you have a very intriguing idea and it has a lot of p- potential we will fast forward you into the final stage 
Um, we are open to businesses who, you know, who, if you have an existing business in the U.S. and you're looking to expand in India, you're a first-time entrepreneur looking to start something new, uh, you know, you have something in India and you want to scale it to the U.S., uh, all of it. We are a global company. Uh, we have footprints across markets, so we're open to people from all sectors, all stages of growth. Uh, we're here to mentor you and help you make the right connections for you and partner with you. So keep, uh, please email us if you're interested and we'll be very happy to hear from you. So basically you are looking from the, our viewers or existing companies, uh, if, if you are really looking for investment or advisory services about the startups, I think uh, you should really reach, uh, you know, like, you know, uh, the uh, email ID which is coming on the screen or we will read it out where to send the, your questions uh, for uh, existing businesses as well as uh, for our next episode also we are going to tell you the uh, you know like you know our uh, topic so that way you can also send us the questions in advance so that's what uh, you know like you know basically you know typically since we take calls we're not taking it so we are telling our viewers to you know follow the guidelines of this show Absolutely. is the best is the email it, so. it, it definitely is, and it helps us come back to you with more impactful and precise answers. So I think that's a, it's a, it's a good format. Yes, and also I have uh, another caller, Arun, from Atlanta, and uh, I have a business in the domain of recruiting recruitment software. We provide a recruitment services to companies in the USA. In my, is my company investable? Is my company scalable? Our recruitment services is also aided by software created specifically for the purpose. The software has been created by a third party that specializes in cookie cut recruitment software. We do cross border recruitment as well. Can you please comment? So well, it really depends on your software, right? The fact that it is cookie cut um, is, is a concern because if you can take it off the shelf and use it, so can your competitors. So. We'd really like to see something that is unique to you, uh, and I recommend being very specific and very targeted. Uh, that is, that'll help you again find funding. For example, ID Ventures is invested in a firm called Zoezy, which is based out of UAE, uh, which specializes in sourcing blue-collared workers for the Middle East. Now, that is something that is really specific, and we have a you know a dedicated team that specializes in this particular aspect. So. Incoming competition can't just come in and enter this domain. Now that's definitely something that we'd like. You know, we, that if your idea, if you can mold it around something that is that unique and specific, and a software that is scalable, we'd definitely be interested in talking to you. And also, like uh, since uh, we have not much time, so I would like to wrap up. There's one more. There are a couple of five more questions are there. We can't take all five questions, but we'll take quickly one question. John from New York. He says, "I have a business in the real estate domain." and we are selling properties in USA to individuals residing in India online as an investment asset. We are expanding our sales to properties beyond USA. Would you like to consider our business? Well, John, real estate is very interesting, right? Because you can scale the real estate product across markets with a few tweaks. We've, we've already invested in two or three real estate startups. Uh, that said, I would be interested in knowing what is it that what is it that you're offering of unique value, right? If so, for Indian investors, if um, they have other very attractive investment opportunities available there, why would they invest in the U.S. real estate market? Um, I recommend you think uh, you come to us with a very nice framework which talks about the complete market potential, uh, how much of that market you are going to capture, uh, growth trajectory and also your design target, right? So things like um, income, geographic focus, education levels, et cetera, uh, and put together a real uh, plan for your potential and that'll be helpful for us to evaluate.